Bill Airport Commerce Park Commission to order at 7 o'clock. The first item on the agenda is a Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Van Oz, would you lead us in the pledge? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number two is a roll call. Mr. Moran is here. Mr. Rathel. Here. Mr. Van Oz. Here. Mr. Manns. Here. Mr. Stoll is excused. Mr. Fulbaum. Here. Item number three is any additions or deletions to the agenda, and I would uh, make a deletion that item number four presentation by Dale is um, going to be postponed until a future meeting. With that, are there any other changes to the agenda? Now I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Motion by Mr. Mann, supported by Mr. Van Oz. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number four is approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of June 22nd, 2015. Approval. Motion by Mr. Rathel. Support. Supported by Mr. Fulbaum. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number five is the financial report for July 2015 and included in your packet was our financial report which indicates our budget amount for revenue is $826,125. Our year to date revenue is $273,594 which equals 33% of our budget and we are exactly 33% of our way through our fiscal year. Our expenditures have a budgeted amount of 826,125. Our year-to-date encumbrances and expenditures are 205,172, which is just shy of 25% of our budget amount for the year. Our capital reserves as of July 31st, 2015 is $481,110. And our past due summary as of August 10th, 2015 is $3,489. And our uh, pending legal action or slash settlement plan for three tenants or two tenants is uh, $8,629. And we have fuel inventory of Jet A fuel of $17,552 and uh, low lead at $7,523. With that, uh, Mike, anything you wanted to uh, point out on the budget report? Um, just a couple areas I wanted to touch base on. Um, the past due rent summary, uh, we're still working that down. Uh, the Russman account there is on a payment plan. Uh, they are following that. It's $500 a month until current. We received the first $500 check um, beginning of last month. Uh, so they are tracking along. The Stanley & Associates, I spoke with that tenant the other day. Uh, stated they would become current with their, their account in the next two weeks, so I'll be tracking that one. Arlie Stewart uh, was a tenant we had, um, actually not a tenant, a plane that had some engine troubles uh, after landing here. Um, a mechanic did some work on it, and they took off. We've been in touch with the tenant and sent them some invoices. We've gotten half paid, so we're waiting to get the last half paid, but it is a little past due, so we're going to be tracking that. Um, the final one there, <clears throat> Savvy Advertising. Um, the airport has actually filed a 30-day notice um, to leave the premise on that on that tenant. Um, they were 90 days past due. I had a conversation with the tenant at that time, had an invoice. The invoice got ripped in half and stated that the tenant stated that they would not be paying. So at that at that point, I made the decision to file the eviction paperwork. Mike, how many months run is that due? The 372. I believe that is three months. I could tell you here in one second. That, that amount you're seeing there is uh, that's more than 90 days past due. So the total amount owed right now is $1,116.45, and that's three months. And anything new on the uh, pending legal action? Nothing, or, nothing new to report. Um, the final note, just on the, the fuel inventory, you can see our 100 low load has been dwindling. Um, I was getting ready to order a new load, and of course, with our refinery issues that the industry has been having lately, the prices have started to go up. 
Um, so we're kind of trying to play some tactics on that. We don't normally order a half load of fuel right as we were ordering is when the refinery issues hit. So the prices have climbed up quite a bit on that. I think what the airport's going to have to end up doing, because that inventory is getting low, is to order a half load now, which is 4,000 gallons instead of our 8,500. Let that dwindle down, and then when the prices come back down past this issue, we'll order a full load when that dwindles again. Um, so we'll probably have an expense somewhere around fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for the four thousand gallons coming up. In how long will that four thousand gallons last? I'd say it probably lasts us another two months, yeah. and if if the rate we've been pumping fuel continues, the summer months are very busy for us. Mr. Manns. So you've got almost four months supply though right now. On the seven thousand dollars? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I that wrong. Yeah, it's not gallons. Yeah, it's a dollar amount. So we we've got um, just under two thousand gallons in our tanks right now. Yep. Okay. And and the only negative with ordering a half load is we tend to pay uh, three to five cent. It normally depends on how the shipping rates are going, but a three to five cent premium for a half load. We're going to split with Monroe Airport, so I'm hoping that that will get down to a two cents because the vicinity is very close. Um, but again, I think that's the best route for the airport to do right now with with the way the market's been going. So we try to play that as best we can and and um, apply some tactics to it. But you'll see that in our next meeting, probably climb another fifteen thousand for inventory. So I have to report. Any questions for Mike? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the financial report for July 2015. Motion by Mr. Van Oz. Support. Supported by Mr. Fulbaum. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Moving on to item number six is the manager's report. 6A is the wedding venue update. Mike? Just want to report to the commission that the airport. Uh, hosted its first wedding in the hangar. Uh, it was, I would say, successful overall. Uh, I know at our last meeting we discussed the possibility of opening it up to future events. Um, Mr. Rathel and I have had some discussions and I've shared my thoughts with him, so he kind of knows where I'm at. I, my thought initially was let's see if we can find um, somebody, a wedding coordinator, somebody to team up with and maybe do certain events a year where they ho they basically run the event. We just, we're just the uh, facility. Um, that person would get a cut for their, obviously, for their services. The only logistical issues that I believe Mr. Rathel and I are going to meet with Township Manager Riam on are restroom facilities and, and some other amenities that we would have to give to any, any renters for weddings that would be difficult because it's access to Township Hall for restrooms and stuff like that. So we're going to explore. Just wanted to keep you updated. We're exploring some options on that, um, trying to keep the door open, and, and uh, hopefully we'll have something to report back next meeting. Any questions for Mike on the uh, wedding venue update? Hearing none, we'll move on to item number 6B, which is the east side of Hangar 1 update. Mike? Just hopefully it will be the last update for a while on this. The um, tenant, we executed the contract for August 1st, so we've received our first payment for the east side of Hangar 1 from D-Ball Sailing. Um, again, a reminder that it's going to be a little bit of a slow move in because his business is in full swing still down in Ohio. Um, I would say probably late this month, early next month, you'll see they're going to build the stage on the second floor where they start cutting and fabricating the sails, and they'll start the build-out of some of the office on the first floor. Um, probably end of September, early October, we'll start seeing some more ac action in the in the facility. Just kind of as his, as his season slows down, um, the building progress will pick up. So uh, all the major renovations are complete. You know, we, we will have some small projects to complete i would say before winter time um there's some small gaps and things here and there we're going to want to insulate before winter comes around but for all intents and purposes the, the tenant has moved in questions for mike on the hangar update hearing none we'll move on to uh, our action items item number seven which is uh, first item is a runway 422 lighting and reconstruction bid award recommendation and we have a resolution in front of us that reads based upon the recommendation by the airfield commerce park manager the Groziel airport commerce park commission hereby recommends that the Groziel township board execute federal contract number d-26-0025-3115 
and state contract numbers FM-82-05-C57 slash MF-82-05-C57 and 8258 with the FAA and the Michigan Department of Transportation, the amount not to exceed $6 million. The local share for the project will not exceed $300,000. And I just would like to read the uh, history and purpose so everyone understands um, what we're doing. Uh, this is a contract between the FAA, the Michigan Department of Transportation, and the Grozeal Municipal Airport for lighting, electrical, and pavement rehabilitation of runway 0422. The airport went out for bids at the beginning of July and received two proposals. <clears throat> Dan's excavating was the low bid, beating Angelo Iafredi by just over $800,000. Dan's Iafredi, Ajax, and Cadillac attended the pre-bid meeting on July 16th. It is believed that the asphalt contractors did not submit due to the paving being a small percentage of the job. MDOT Aeronautics and the airport engineer, CNS, have reviewed and are in support of awarding the contract to the low bidder. For funding, the commission is requesting an internal loan from the township for the expenditure not to exceed $300,000 on a 10-year, 2% interest internal loan, with the first two years being interest only to pay for the local share of the project, which is 5%. So it's 5% of the $6 million uh, equals $300,000. So I'll entertain a motion, and then we can have some discussion. I'll move. Motion by Mr. Van Oz. Or supported by Mr. Fulbaum. Under discussion. Mike, anything to add? Mr. Chair, do we want to add into the motion for uh, the note comment for legal review that we discussed? Yes, uh, as long as Mr. Van Oz is in, in support of that, that this is subject to review by legal counsel. And Mr. Fulbaum, support. Yeah. We haven't had that yet? No. According to Mike and I talked, and we've not seen the contract yet. Correct, Mike? Correct. The, the terms and conditions of the contract are what we approve when any time any changes come up in that in the original terms and conditions we bring it to the board uh, we review it the changes themselves we approve it it goes to the township board they review it goes to our legal staff and then the board approves it um, but I would say even though it's the stuff we've seen time time and time again with the amend with the changes the attorney should give it a once over before we sign obviously so we'd wanted to add that wording in there so the basic contract is going to be very similar to one we've seen in Correct. the past and the reason that there's three contracts it's just split up the way the state funds the projects we're going to have one federal contract that's discretionary funding from the fa um, the two state contracts one of them is federal funding that the state gets as a block grant so they get the, the block of money from the feds and then they decide how they're going to divvy it up and then the third contract from the state is for the lighting project and that's coming from the block grant as well but they like to split up the paving and lighting portions of the project so that's the reason for the three separate contracts <coughs> questions mr chair mr rathel you know when we had that meeting mike we had agreed to some things that uh, are not in a standard contract you know this is the third standard contract that I've seen since I've been here on run, runway rehabilitation, but we we talked about the approach, the ramps coming into the uh, into the runway, what we would have to do and not have to do in the future, um, and some other things as well. I have to go back and check my notes, but you know, are those going to be in the contract? Or are we going to be legally bound to to do things that we haven't agreed upon? So maybe the, the bones of the contract is standard, but you know, buried in this contract are some other obligations that, that we could be signing away with. Correct. So the meeting that you and I attended, um, like you said, this is standard boilerplate contract. The specifications that were discussed in that meeting were typed up in minutes by our engineer, reviewed by us, and then signed off on the FA that that was agreed to in that meeting. That's how those what you're referring to is getting handled. So it gets sent to me. I say they look good. She sends them to the state. They look okay. And then they send them to the feds. The feds say, no, we didn't okay this. Yes, we did. So that's all documented with her engineer and in the minutes of those meetings. But is that part of the contract? Is that an addendum to the contract? or I believe there's... The, con the contract, if I remember right, is more than just a funding mechanism. It is an obligation of the township of use. and Correct. So I would say that's something that we would 
make sure our attorney's on board with and that those minutes are bound somewhere in that boilerplate in the contract. You know, and, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm somewhat a history, a, a student of history, but I don't like living in the past, but we have to bring up the past. And, you know, the contract was approved by the airport commission. It was approved by the township board. And then it was found out that, you know, there was obligations that the township had to do to cut down 800 trees um, on uh, Round Island. So, you know, there's things in these contracts that obligate the township. And I just, again, want to know what, what I'm agreeing to. Mike, why don't you make sure that we all get a copy of that contract before, sure. at the same time, legal counsel gets a copy of it to review. Understood. When does this need to be uh, executed? The state ones need to be executed end of next month, end of September, October. The actual federal contract comes at a later date in November, but it's easier, for my eyes, it's easier to bundle them all together rather than to approve two of them that have to be approved and then come back with the federal one. Just make it all, if they're all the same con same project contract, I figured we'd approve all three together. I don't mind approving all three together. But I just don't want to not have the contract here and say, okay, I'm going to approve this contract, which we don't have, right. subject to legal review, who has uh, no knowledge whatsoever of what we agreed upon or what we would be willing to obligate ourselves to, and then just send it to the township board because then the township board is handicapped. They don't, they have a body, a governing body, this commission here that just threw it to the to the lawyer who all he's going to do is just look at it and and stamp it and charge us and then throw it up to the board mike you can hold this resolution to go to the board until after we review the contract is that correct it's scheduled to go to the next board meeting on the 24th if we hold it to a further meeting it could get into a point where if there's any delays by the board we'd be pushing it and again to address that you know we've with those meetings the engineers with the minutes and specifications do go back to them for review they sign that the feds sign off that we agreed that this is how the setup is going to be did they do that do we yes so we have we have all i have the documents from the minutes signed by the fa yes and from our from the meeting you were at and from the other meetings okay so then part of the legal review would be um making sure that those are bound correct if you have that, Mike, and then our township attorney agrees that those are legally bound and attached to this, uh, these contracts, whichever which one, whichever contract it fits into, then I would be okay with it. Okay. But Again, we've got it subject to the review by legal counsel. So pass that All information the along to them and make sure that that's our desire is that he doesn't approve that without that language in there. Correct. Okay. Does that make sense, Mike? It does. Yeah. I understand. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, we've got a motion by Mr. Van Oz, supported by Mr. Fulboom. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carried. Item number 7B is the Scott Zelinsky lease approval. And we've got a, rec a resolution before us that reads, based upon the recommendation from the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Manager, the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Commission hereby approves the lease for Scott Zelinsky and the Grozeal Municipal Airport. Terms of the proposed lease agreement are listed in the history, purpose, and explanation section of this resolution. And just as a summary, it's a one-year lease from October 1, 2015 through September 30, 2016 with one one-year option with a rental rate of $100.27 with a CPI increase in the second year uh, to be added on to the monthly rent. And we are in reference to building number 28. I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Manns. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Rathel. Mike, can you uh, talk about building 28? 
Sure. Um, building 28 is your historical battery building that the Navy used for storage. Um, when it was turned over to the township, it's a very small concrete block building onto one of the main entrances to the airport. It's right off the service drive. In the second page here, you'll see it roughly circled in a very small unit. Um, in history, it's always been used as kind of a little quick hobby shop or storage of tools for somebody local on the island. Island Metal Art, um, Miss, Miss Christine Jabro, who also owns Lloyd's, would just use it as their, the company was called Island Metal Art, so she would kind of have it as a hobby on the side for creating sculptures and signs and things like that. Um, when she came in and said that she was... She was on a month-to-month -month at that point. She came in and notified us that she would be vacating the unit, um, but said she had had a friend uh, that would be interested in taking her over, which Mr. Zielinski approached me about a week after that and, and uh, offered to pick up the lease in the exact same rate and uh, spot that Ms. Jabro was uh, renting the unit for. How many square feet is it? I recall it's roughly 300. And what would you say the condition of it was? Fair. Got an old tar roof on it. You know, it's got um, that little patch here and there. The tenant is normally taking care of the building. It's just a small little block building that they'll put some tar on the roof on and and do some, some mortar repair, basic stuff. But it's a very small unit, again, just kind of as a storage thing. And, and this tenant's offered to do the same. It's kind of always been a little bit of a buddy system where the tenant's responsible for it, but if it's something small, we'll have our, our maintenance staff go over and give them a hand for a couple hours here and there. We have a motion by Mr. Manns, but no support. <laughs> support by Mr. Fulbaum. <laughs> Any further discussion? Mr. Chair, you're letting this meeting get out of hand. <laughs> I'm not supposed to let you talk until we have a, a support. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All the opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number eight is our subcommittee reports. We have none tonight. Uh, item number nine, any discussion items? Anybody have any discussion items? Hearing, oh, Mr. Van Oz. I just, <clears throat> this could come up on my statement too, but uh, the Grosse Hill Rotary Club with, in conjunction with the uh, Novi Rotary Club, Northville, I'm sorry, Rotary Club, is sponsoring Tour de Eel. It's going to take place at our hangar here on the 20th or it's a Sunday the 20th, is that correct? Right. We're going to use utilize part of the hangar. They're going to have a uh, bike rodeo for young kids, an 8-mile, a 16-mile, a 32-mile, a 75-mile event hooked with this. And then the people that do the 75-mile 70 mile trip from Northville, well, this will be the turnaround point here on Gross Hill. So we're kind of combining the two. Uh, there will be more publicity going on to it, but they're going to be using, utilizing a portion of the hangar, there's going to be a late breakfast and stuff like that. The Rotary Club's handling everything. It just, uh, I'll assist Mike in any movement of equipment or anything we have to do. But I have a, I have a meeting with the event organizers this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock to figure out the logistics and the layout, so it is, it's progressive. Yeah, we're anticipating 200, 250 riders, which should be a decent island event. There's going to be a poker run here on the island, and they're going to be stopping at all the historical sites on the island, and just got to generate some interest here. Are the participants only from Northville, or will there be Grosio participants? There'll as well? be about 250 from Grosio. Oh, okay. Motorcycles or bicycles? Bicycles. Oh, okay. Plugging up the roads. And, and how many from Northville? Well, they've got about 500 in their event, but I, they're only anticipating about 75 are going to do the Come here. full circuit. Okay. What's the date of that again? 20th. 20th of September. It's a Sunday. I believe they're going to be utilizing the north uh, pavement of the hangar and probably the north half of the hangar, so we'll just move the planes onto the south half and accommodate them. But we'll figure all the logistics out Wednesday when I meet meet with the uh, organizers. It's got some great sponsorship. Horno is getting involved with sponsorship. Uh, 
the bridge companies get involved with sponsorship. Several of the bike companies, uh, the bike museum is going to be open. So if you guys <laughs> want to take a look at old bikes, because I don't think I've seen that open since he started it. But they're going to participate. There'll be a bunch of giveaways and prizes. It'll be a big event. I mean, uh, this is the first. Hopefully, we'll do it annually. Good. Well, uh, good luck, and <laughs> hopefully it'll be a success. Mike, if you could give us an update our next meeting on any of the details and sure. all of that, that'd be great. Any other discussion items? Hearing none, the uh, next item on the agenda is the chairman's report. I have nothing to report this month. Uh, item number 11 is public comment. Carl, anything? No? Hearing none, we'll uh, move to item number 12, which is adjourned. So moved. Motion by Mr. Rathel. Support. Support by Mr. Manns. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Adjournment is always either moved by Mr. Manns <laughs> or supported by Mr. Rathel.